Hey, all right, so uh, time waits for no man. We have to uh, get through this modeling slab edges. Last couple of sections, or at least last couple of pages, went uh, kind of uh, off on a tangent a little bit. Um, but it gets right back with the uh, with the floor slabs and the pads. But right around the block is um, is some more advanced modeling tools, uh, and we're going to be spending a lot of time on it. So um, yeah, the family editor uh, is coming up as well. So we'll be working within the uh, alternate interface. I just started up another session of Revit. Let it run. Um, Let's get this uh, burnt to disk, huh? So Slab Edge is a tool that allows you to create thickened portions of slabs, typically located at the boundaries of floors. A slab edge type is composed of a profile family. It is important that the material assignment of the edge match that of the floor to which you will apply the slab edge to ensure proper joining of geometry. Let's explore, let's explore the application of a slab edge to a floor at grade. So open the file, chapter 14. If we go to where you downloaded the uh, book's companion data set files. Chapter 14, uh, design floor RVT. So, and as, as you can see, it still says 13. Uh, and again, Rental, construction, rental, construction. Have you been on a high-rise uh, exterior construction hoist? Uh, anyway, first of all, you're gonna have to get over the fact that uh, it's a bit frightening when you're on the outside of the building. It's almost like a uh, free fall, a great adventure. In any event, uh, it takes a lot of nerve to, to do that. And they make pretty good money, those hoist operators. But in any event, let's, uh, I'm waxing nostalgic. Um, C14 design floor. I let it upgrade two years, and uh, we're gonna keep going. It's eight o'clock. Uh, we've uh, I've been up since six doing this as usual, but I've got to get this under my belt because um, the MVP. I really want to get to the MVP portion. I really want to get to the MVP portion. So okay, click the architectural tab. Uh, in the ribbon and select floor slab edge from build panel. This tool is also available on the, from the structural tab. If necessary, orbit the three of you so you can see the bottom of the lowest floor slab. Pick all, floor, all four bottom edges of the floor slab at the level named ground. Activate the section view. Okay, well, first of all, let's get to that view. Now, let's uh, close this. Let's uh, see what kind of 3D views we have. Ah, okay, so we have we have this as our model. So let's just get this in a view that we could uh, utilize. Let's Z8 to zoom all of the um, viewports and know that we're on the ground. So if we select that floor slab on grade, we can see that's the one that's selected in our, our plan view. Let's just look at it again from the south, just to have a better idea. Let's view those as well. Set up your viewports. And then hit Z8. I said, I have three viewports. We have this guy over here. Does he have parameters? Level one. Man, Corbu. Okay, well, Corbu. And again, when I come across words in software, I, I automatically say to myself, well, again, it's, a, uh, it's an odd name. And as always, with Revit, I'm not linked to the internet. But there's always, there's always something to do with these little words they interleave. You, you gotta, if you don't, if you've never heard a word before, you gotta look it up and see if it's a, uh, it's one of those uh, things. Rather, it's actually comical sometimes. I, in any event, <laughs> I've seen so many things, and I bring it up because I've seen so many things in models. Like in the field, people doing uh, really funny things, even like during the holidays and stuff like that. You'll find some, some interesting uh, creative ideas in these commercial models that they're actually doing in the field. So, uh, Santa Claus with his reindeer on, on certain levels, you get a model and you're like, wait a second, what is that? Anyway, so uh, it is what it is. All work and no planning checks, Jack and Old Boy. All right, so we have our south elevation open, we have our ground floor elevation open, ZA, zoom extents. And we have this 3D view of the uh, floors. Okay, so click the architectural tab and select floor edge from the build panel. It's also um, 
for edge from the build panel. It's also available on the structural tab. Slab, floor edge. Let's do it from the structural tab. Actually, you know what? Let's follow the directions, Mike. You know me. I'm always trying to uh, reinvent the wheel sometimes. Slab edge. Okay. Um, I picked all four bottom edges of the floor slab at the level named ground. And we've done this. So if we click this one, this one, oops. So you get it? see this one there we go if necessary orbit the 3d view I just screwed that all up I picked the edge not the floor itself so let's do it again like this pick all four bottom edges one Two, three, four. Okay, that's a little better. So if we look at this in uh, in section, let's take a look. <laughs> you can see section one. That's the view we're trying to get. All right, so activate the view section one. And you'll see the slab edge applied to and joined with the floor. Remember that the material in the slab edge type must match the material in the floor type properties for the geometry to join properly. Real world scenario. Making early design models. Excuse me, I'm having a couple of quick check. House blend. In any event, making early design models. When you first start implementing building information modeling in early phases of the design, the need to emulate drafting methods is often needed to align the schemes with drawing conventions. As an idea is created, there's usually a need to make some generic assumptions about more complex systems to make the overall design intent as clear as possible. How do you translate this so-called conceptual design into a building information modeling process? To bridge the gap between conceptual design and a highly accurate model, we created a single floor type that contained assumptions not only for the floor but also for the structure and ceiling assembly below. This larger assembly gives a graphic, uh, graphic emphasis to building sections without the burden of modeling three different systems before they are close to being resolved. The design floor type also gave us the opportunity to create custom slab edges that are voids instead of solids, voids that approximate a design for ceiling shade pockets or other interface conditions. Okay, now, that being said, creating a, cus creating a custom floor edge you can apply a great deal of flexibility to a floor assembly in early design. As we, we described previously, you can create a floor for early design phases that accommodates the floor, structure, plenum, and ceiling in a single floor type. You can also apply a custom, customized edge to this type of assembly for more creative soffit conditions as, uh, at exterior walls. Okay, so that is relatively, let's see if it's the same as what they've done here. Uh, yes, to a certain extent. Yes, they didn't include the lights. But yeah, that's pretty much it, the design floor sandwich. So you have now uh, a floor type that is uh, conducive to a coordination study. Because we've got this uh, volumetric floor sandwich and as we all know, well, not we don't all know, but and to a certain extent, I don't even know. <laughs> but we know that um, the systems have to now, in most cases, coexist uh, up in this little sandwich. And so in a lot of cases, it's very little. Square footage and, and, and cubic volume are directly, directly, directly related to, to cost, right? Space. Here's the money. 
especially in the city. It's crazy. And all the other boroughs. So, back to this borough. You dirty rat. You can apply a great deal of flexibility to a floor assembly and early design. As we described previously, you can create a floor for early design phases that accommodates the floor structure, plan, and ceiling in a single floor type. And we can create soffit conditions at the exterior walls. So that's going to be important. Let's run through a short exercise so you can practice this skill. C14 design floor, which we have open from the book's web page, or continue with the file from the previous exercise. Uh, select the floor at level one and open the properties palette. Change the type to design floor sandwich. Well, select the floor at level one. Well, let's get our bearing, shall we? Well, here's ground, here's level one, and there's the floor. Let's make sure in our 3D view that we have the whole floor selected. All right, so. Change the type to design floor sandwich. Type selector, design floor sandwich. Okay. Begin a new in place component by going to the arch architecture tab and selecting component model in place in the build panel. Set the family category to floors and specify the name as floor edge level one. You are now in the family editing mode and the ribbon will have different tabs and panels. Click the Create tab and select Void Forms. Void Sweep from the Forms panel. Click the Pick Path tool from the Sweep panel and choose all four top edges of the perimeter of the floor at level one. You can activate the 3D views, view floors only to complete the picking of all four edges as shown in figure 13. Okay, so let's do that. Let's just get uh, into our isometric view. Let's take a, uh, a architecture, component, model in place, a category, floors. And we're gonna call this a floor edge hyphen level one period. Floor edge hyphen L, excuse me, L1. You are now in the family editing mode. <clears throat> and the ribbon will have different tabs and panels. Click the create tab and select void, void forms from the forms panel. Click the pick path tool from the sweep panel. So we're going to do a void sweep. Pick path from the sweeps panel. Okay, um, four edges of level one. If you look in the status bar, pick existing edges or lines. So as we hover around, as you can see, we can pick a, any edge we want. So let's just hold down on our shift key, push down on our wheel, and we can just do this. Uh, they said lower edges, all four edges, all four top edges of the perimeter, all four top edges of the perimeter. Now remember this from early exercises. We could sweep profiles around work planes. See how the reference plane and the node popped up? Okay. Click the finish edit mode icon in the mode panel when all four edges, excuse me, of the floor have been picked. Open the properties panel if it is not already visible. Even though we, 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 we hit finish edit mode, the properties palette is open and it, we have one other command we must now um, invoke. You might need to reactivate the select profile mode if the properties palette lists only family floors. To do this, click select profile on the contextual tab of the ribbon. Well, um, if it selects only family floors, so go into the select profile in the contextual tab of the ribbon. Well, we have that here as well. If we go here, you can see we have all of these profiles. 
circular handrail, fascia flat, gutter profile bevel, uh, parapet cap precast uh, in multiple sizes, rectangular handrail, reveal course, reveal course two, just like we had in the walls. Um, uh, sill precast, sandwich edge, slab edge thickened, um, 2436 uh, by 12 by 18s, stair nosing, pan, wall sweep, brick course, soldier course. So as you can see, we have all these profiles, and these are the same profiles we're going to find up here. Um, it's reading from the profiles that are loaded into the, um, into the program. And you look down here in the project browser, which you can't see because of my head, but as you can see in the profiles, all these families are loaded. And that's what we just pulled down. Okay, so uh, it's intuitive. Again, if you're dismissing this as some kind of video game software, um, you could, because it is just like that, but it's also a construction documentation folder. So it, it, it may appear on the surface that it's some type of beautiful rendering engine game, and it is to a, certain, to a very, very high extent. But it's also a, a, um, a black and white contract document generator. Um, and it carries weight, it carries weight. So, uh, yeah, we don't need to do that. We have them selected, except that now I uh, was messing around, and I, I don't. So <laughs> let me go back and see if I can do it again. Hold on. That's why you ever talk. That's why you ever not paying attention, right? So let's make sure we pick these edges one more time. Uh, oops, what do you know? That's what I get. That's what I get. That's okay. Practice makes perfect. So we are going to create. We've already got it. We're in the modify sweep, so we're in the sweep. We need to uh, cancel out of this. Cancel out of this command. Cancel out of the command. Okay. steps. Component, model in place, that's what I get. Um, floors. And this was floor edge level one. Floor edge hyphen level one. Okay. And we're going to do a void form, a void sweep, pick path, Go into this view, pick the top edges of the first floor. Was level one, right? Yeah, level one. Right, so now that we have them, hit the um, finish edit mode, and the profile's open. In the profile parameter, select SD sandwich edge type one. SD type one. Sandwich Edge profile has been preloaded for the convenience of this exercise. If you would like to explore how this profile is created, expand the Families tree in the Project Browser and find Profiles SD Sandwich Edge. Right-click it and choose Edit from the Context menu. You may need to adjust the orientation of the profile so that it faces in towards the floor as shown in Figure 14.5. To do so, make sure the profile is selected and click the Flip button in the Options bar or check the profile. Check the profile's flipped option in the properties palette. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we can we obviously edit the family um, even after we put it in, and it'll inherit the uh, changes. But that's the profile. That's the, uh, the profile. This is SD a Sandwich Edge Type 1, which is in the properties palette right here. Right mouse click. Um, yeah, we could, uh, we could eventually edit this. But um, we're still in the, the sweep, right? So um, 
switch to the modify sweep tab in the ribbon and click the finish edit mode icon from the mode panel. Okay. And again, we still haven't finished creating our mass. We've created our uh, void swept, our void sweep, our sweeped void, but we haven't finished the mass. Uh, it's still a, uh, um, we're still in the model in place editor. Okay, so pick the void sweep and then um, select the, uh, and then the floor level one. Ah, okay, so finish edit mode icon from the mode panel. Switch to the modify void sweep tab in the ribbon and select cut. Cut geometry in the geometry panel, pick the void sweep, and then the floor at level one. Well, we're in the in the cut geometry, selects the geometry to cut. This tool is useful when you want to cut geometry, such as when cutting solids from uh, solids or, or voids from solids. Okay, so pick the void sweep, cut, pick the void sweep, void sweep. Now, we didn't flip it in. If you look, it's, it's not going to cut anything in this, this void right here is its cutting edge, I should say. It's, um, its base is on the outside edge of the floor. So if, as you sweep this void space around the perimeter of this floor, it's supposed to cut. But it did say you may need to adjust the profile so that it faces in towards the floor, as shown in Figure 14.5. Right? It's not going to it's not going to carve it. Any, it's not going to do anything. And I'll, I'll do it again just to illustrate that it shouldn't, in theory, do anything. Click Finish Model and Place Editor panel at the right of the end of the ribbon. After the section one view, you should see that the floor sandwich assembly at level one has been customized in a similar way to the floor at level two. You can experiment with adding and embellishing detail components to show in the section. Now, it's not going to work. I'm not going to do that. Some void forms of this family not cut anything and will be deleted. To make a void form cut something else, use the cut geometry tool. So cancel that, right? So we actually have to go, if we, let's see if we can edit the family. So if I can, I'm going to go there. I don't want to edit the sweep. I want it to edit the profile. I want to edit the profile. And I can't while I'm in this mode. So it kind of throws a curve at us. It throws a curve at us. We have to edit that family first. Right? We have to edit the family. So if we look at this from this way, Spin this around here. Floors only. Now this one, if you look at the other section view, right, right, right we're not going to see. We're not going to see it because it's an interior cut. Now hold that thought. This is supposed to sweep it on the inside. Let's make sure. Sometimes, believe it or not, sometimes you get a uh, you get a, a little uh, a, a curve thrown at you here. So, uh, I just want to make sure that we're on the same path. We have this uh, slab edge here already, and it has a. Uh, it's not. It's not the sandwich, right? It's not the sandwich. It's, so, if I was to hold on, if I was to grab this whole. Just give me a second, hold on. Hold that thought. Slab on gray, and then there's the slab etch. Okay, hold on a second, I want to see something. Right, I could easily do it from there. The slab etch still remains detached from the floor that we created. Now, I inherited the profile from, from the uh, slab edge design floor sandwich profile. <clears throat> now, just hold that thought for a second. 
because I want to uh, just uh, dissect something. So if we go into that slab edge type one, and we take a look at it, we have we can edit this family with the profile. So I want to just see if it gives us that opportunity in the um, project browser, which ordinarily it does. You may need to adjust the orientation of the profile so the faces in toward the through the floor to make sure this profile is selected and click the flip button in the options bar check the profile's flipped oh is that all it takes is just the flip flipping this switch as opposed to having to edit the profile family because that's the case of saving a little bit of time okay well that's good um so if indeed um is there a is there a flip <laughs> flip wilson all right well thinking we have to create the we have to go into the actual profile family that it's pulling from the profile directory library and flip it over which would be just a parameter that should have been in it and, and thank god i didn't go down that road where i'd be uh, creating uh, parametric uh, constrained blocks in autocad mp we don't want to do that but it's similar right it's similar uh, oh you will autocad lt users that are just wasting your time uh, moving regions around incrementally to to keep it constrained to wall parameters in any event and elevation parameters i'm not going to get into orthographic projection but you have to get it if you don't get it you're not getting it um, so profiles flipped there okay now the carving knife is on the inside let's say okay ah that's more like what we were looking for it said it should resemble a little more like the second floor uh, uh, or the third floor sandwich. Now, okay, so that gets us to uh, activate the section view, and you should see that the floor sandwich assembly at level one has been customized in a similar way to the floor at level two. You can experiment with adding embellishing detail components as shown in the section. Embellishing, well, that would be um, light fixtures, but they were the 2D profiles of hi hats. And we can experiment with that. And when we get to MEP, we'll bring these tools with us. We'll bring these tools with us. That's the beauty of it. Uh, and if you go into it just from that one side, uh, just as if you go into it from this side and approach building information modeling from a discipline-specific uh, conjecture, then you're going to find, um, like I have, that you're going to be limited. So it's best. It's best to uh, it's diversification, if you think about it. It's the diversification of all those disciplines within your repertoire so that you are exposed to all of them and not just in your own little capacitor uh, surrounded by only uh, this information that um, flows within that organization of industry professionals, uh, industry information. So. Exposure to all the traits um, is going to be helpful to you with this, right? Because it's been helpful to me. And again, I started as a laborer, and I've seen all the traits. All the way up to, uh, to the ones that uh, dish out the cash 
I, I have some things I've learned about that too. These owners of these really expensive buildings, I don't want to laugh, but they are really, they're a savvy bunch. How they extract the money to get these buildings built in the first place that they own? You think they put much money out of their own pockets? I'm just telling you what I learned along the way. I'm, I'm not saying that I don't, I'm not pat myself too hard on the back, but a floor sandwich? It's ironic. Anyway, listen, uh, exposure is, is, uh, is very important. And these buildings, uh, they have a lot to offer. They have a lot to offer when they're, when they're completed. Anchor, anchor stores, right? Anchor, anchor chains, brands, all that. They anchor. You know, they anchor. Okay, I'm just kidding, okay. Yes, it's empty. I'm morally bankrupt. All right, so um, we can experiment with embellishing later. We need some modeling floor finishes and using a split face for thin finishes. So, uh, yeah, practice that. I know I'm going to have to. So, uh, depending on if indeed you uh, decide to take a position with uh, a structural engineer, an architect, a detailer, a building information modeling consulting firm, there's lots of um, studio search. The, the industry is hiring. This is one of those sectors that is uh, in demand, and you could do the research on it if you want. I don't know if you've ever done what I've done when I was younger at my desk, just looking at the uh, salaries of different folks across industries and sectors. And then so I want the most money, and, and a lot of people gravitate though, towards that. They uh, they figure that's my best but bet, you know, that's your best bet. But my, my, my point is that you should just focus on your strengths in anything. And uh, again, this message in a bottle is for anyone who, you know, Pays attention. You could not give a flying rat's ass, <laughs> and I understand that. But again, this is uh, more of an educational assessment on either side of the screen. I, I still critique my work, um, and I'm giving you, I'm allowing you the luxury of being able to do the same. But again, if you point one finger at someone, you point two back at yourself. I demand an Eva effort. What happened? I didn't even start. No, I didn't stop.